Hey, Retcon Raider here. At this point, it's pretty obvious what sort of games I generally like to play. I dabble in a lot of genres, but I have a clear preference for turn-based strategy and role-playing games. A lot of the games I've talked about so far are ones that haven't come out yet, but today I thought I'd spend a bit of time talking about a game that I often find myself playing in my spare time. Today I thought I'd talk about... Battle Brothers by Overhype Studios. Now, obviously, those of you who are fans of turn-based strategy have probably already heard of Battle Brothers by now. But given that it's a low-budget indie title that only recently reached full release, I figured it couldn't hurt to do a quick little video reviewing the game. So, what is Battle Brothers? Well, Battle Brothers is a turn-based tactical game with RPG elements and a modest overarching strategy layer. The game takes place in a low-magic fantasy setting heavily inspired by Germanic folklore, which makes sense given that Overhype Studios is based out of Germany. The player takes on the role of a member of a mercenary band who is thrust into a position of leadership after the previous captain is killed during an ambush. The player is tasked with returning his battered mercenary company to its former glory. This is done by hiring new mercenaries, equipping them with better armor and weaponry, and keeping them alive in deadly turn-based battles. The game makes heavy use of procedurally generated content and is presented in the form of an open-ended campaign that rewards patience and perseverance. It's a harsh and unforgiving setting, with an even harsher combat system that pulls no punches, so it can be very important to know when to cut your losses and run away. After all, the game only ends when the last of your mercenaries is killed, and as long as you have at least one or two men remaining, you can theoretically rebuild. The game's strongest aspect is, without a doubt, the complex and rather comprehensive turn-based tactical combat system. This is obviously what Overhype Studios focused the most on throughout the game's four years of development, and it clearly shows. There are a lot of familiar concepts in there. An action point system, hex-based movement, cover and elevation, fatigue, a comprehensive injury system, and more. All woven together into a single, well-crafted system. All of the combat mechanics play off of each other, making for some surprising tactical depth in even the most straightforward battles. While it's clearly the game's biggest advantage, it can also be the game's biggest drawback. Like I said, Battle Brothers doesn't pull any punches. The enemies generally play by the same rules that the player has to abide by, but as the game advances they will often have the advantage of terrain or number or both. And one bad turn can be the difference between heroic victory and unmitigated disaster. Fortunately, the game tries to be accommodating in that regard, with a few basic difficulty options as well as giving the player a choice between a conventional save system or the much more brutal Iron Man mode. Beyond that, another big part of the game's draw is the procedurally generated content. Each time you start a new campaign, the world is generated based on a short alphanumeric seed, randomly placing both towns and terrain, though it generally tries to link everything together in a reasonably logical fashion. Roads will connect most towns, but in some cases you may end up with particularly remote towns that require the player to travel through the wild, or charter a boat, in order to reach them. Likewise, as the game advances, the player will first encounter randomized missions and randomized events, and then eventually find themselves facing one of three randomized endgame scenarios, including a grand civil war among the noble houses, an unstoppable tide of orcs seeking to raise everything in their path, or a dark curse that causes an army of the dead to rise up against the living. And then there are the mercenaries, who are just as procedurally generated as both the world map and the game's loose-knit storyline. The player will start with three semi-randomized mercenaries in their company, but each is loosely designed to fit into the game's three main archetypes. The defensive shield brother, the aggressive two-handed warrior, and the long-ranged archer. But as the player seeks to fill out their ranks with more mercenaries, they'll quickly discover just how widely varying they can be. Different towns will offer different types of mercenaries, some of them better suited to combat than others. 
A quaint hamlet in the middle of the wilderness may only have lumberjacks and poachers to offer, but those can make for some ideal recruits when you're on a tight budget. Big towns can offer much more capable mercenaries, like veteran soldiers or well-trained nobles, but they'll expect a significantly larger paycheck if you want them to join your ranks. And even beyond their simple occupations, mercenaries are further shaped by semi-randomized attributes, randomized specializations, and randomized character traits. A mercenary who seems like a great hire at first glance may turn out to have a frail constitution, barely able to make it through a skirmish without suffering an asthma attack, while another seemingly innocuous peasant may turn out to be a stone-cold killing machine, with a penchant for brutally and efficiently decapitating his foes. This element of randomness is further expanded by the game's event system, which periodically offers up text-based story events involving the player's mercenaries as well as the world around them. Different types of mercenaries can trigger significantly different types of events, sometimes even offsetting their inherent strengths or weaknesses, and occasionally having very unexpected results. Two noble swordsmen might end up in a duel, forcing you to sideline both of them until their injuries heal. A houndmaster may end up taming a wild dog or wolf, bolstering your ranks. A craftsman may request special materials for a pet project, with equal chances of a pleasant or disappointing payoff. A rat catcher may decide to supplement your food supplies with his personal stock, saving you some precious gold, but with a chance of accidentally poisoning your men each time he does it. This system encourages the player to have a diverse selection of men from all walks of life, since even mercenaries from humble backgrounds can end up as heroes, assuming they live long enough. As the game advances, the player will gain and lose many mercenaries. Those who survive long enough will gain additional attribute points and perks, which will allow the player to further specialize them for specific roles on the battlefield. The game doesn't make use of a rigid class system, so it's up to the player to decide exactly what strategies they prefer, and to train their mercenaries accordingly. But it's important to remember that different types of enemies may require different strategic approaches. A row of archers and spearmen may prove effective against foes such as bandits or unarmored beasts, but it won't do much good against skeletons reanimated with dark magic. Outside of combat, the game enjoys some light elements of exploration and an abstracted simulated economy. The player can stick to the roads, traveling from town to town taking on jobs and trading goods, or they can wander off the beaten path and go in search of trouble, which they'll often find in the form of wandering encounters or randomly generated enemy strongholds. While there are certainly many games with more detailed campaign systems, the system that's offered in Battle Brothers is sufficient, though it can quickly grow repetitive once the player figures out the basics. From a narrative standpoint, Battle Brothers is a bit lacking as well. Given the highly randomized nature of the game, there's no real main storyline to follow. Every player begins their game the same way as the newly appointed leader of a small band of mercenaries, but from there the story is largely determined by a cascade of random events, eventually leading to a randomized climax, or a bloody death. But the setting is still fascinating, with the game offering many glimpses of the world around the player during the various randomized events. The writing in these events is generally very good, and there are enough different events in the event pools that it may be quite some time before the player begins encountering repeated events. Personally, I've played the game for over 300 hours, and I still haven't seen them all. Perhaps the weakest element of the game is the art, but that all comes down to exactly what your personal preferences might be. The units are all presented as abstract pawns, like playing pieces on a chessboard, and it's the sort of thing that you'll either end up getting used to, or that you'll end up hating. But, given that this was an entirely independently produced game with a limited budget, I think that the art style is a fair compromise of functionality and aesthetics. It's also worth noting that the game spent a lot of time in early access on Steam, but it was officially released just a few months ago, and it recently received its final major content update, bringing it up to version 1.1. I'll admit, it's a bit disappointing to learn that the game won't be receiving any more content, including DLC, but I think it's important to note that the game already has plenty of content to offer. 
and it seems to be virtually bug-free, which is a rarity these days. So, what's the final verdict? Well, personally, I love the game, though I'll also admit that I'm often frustrated by it. It's the sort of game that I often play in my spare time when I don't feel like diving into something with a more complex storyline or campaign structure. Battle Brothers is adaptable enough that I can easily sit down and play it for just 30 minutes, knocking out a battle during my lunch break or before I go to bed. But I could just as easily sit down and play it all day if I felt like it. It's a game that's definitely not for everyone, especially folks who don't want to deal with a steep learning curve and an unforgivingly brutal combat system. The heavy use of random elements may also be discouraging for folks who want a more structured narrative experience. But for those with the patience or masochism to master that combat system, I think it can make for an extremely rewarding game. So as far as recommendations go, I'll give Battle Brothers a solid thumbs up, which I guess would be the equivalent of about a 4 out of 5 on the scale I may or may not have just come up with. Just keep in mind that you're hearing this from someone who's a huge fan of turn-based strategy games, and who's generally not too concerned about graphics. So feel free to adjust that score accordingly if your personal preferences differ. I'm currently working on a short video that shows off some gameplay, which I'll be posting later this week. So if you're interested in learning more about the game, or if you just want to see how bad I am at playing Battle Brothers, then be sure to keep an eye out for it. But until then, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about, and playing, Battle Brothers, you can also find out more about the game by visiting the official website or the game's incredibly detailed wiki. Links are in the description.